Diary. Good evening. It is April 2024, and uh, this video is about backup. Um, in our home, in our smart home in the UK, we have a lot of Raspberry Pis, um, but this principle does apply to not just the Raspberry Pi collection, but all your computers. And the answer is that all your computers should be backed up. Now, um, for Raspberry Pis, as you're about to see, I have a well tried and tested combination. Now we're looking at a Raspberry Pi 5, and if you've been following along on the uh, video or the uh, website, you'll notice that I've recently moved the documentation server onto a Raspberry Pi 5. And in our home, Raspberry Pis run from an external USB stick. So at the beginning of this video, you saw a picture of said Raspberry Pi, and you notice that sticking out of the Raspberry Pi is a USB drive and the operating system runs from that drive. Uh, and what we do for backups is quite simple, and I'm going to show you what we do, is we insert a second USB stick into the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I've done that already. If you look at the LSUSB command, you'll see that there are uh, a SanDisk Extreme Pro here and a SanDisk Extreme Pro there, and that's because there are now two USB sticks in the Raspberry Pi. Now the second Raspberry, the second stick is just fresh out of the packet. So if I was to do something like sudo, if I was to get focus. By the way, I'm, I'm connecting to the Raspberry Pi using VNC. Um, so that's a free product on the client and server end. And I'm doing it from a, a, a Mac computer, it turns out. I would normally have done it from a Windows computer in the past. Um, so this is a way to get a graphical connection to your Raspberry Pi. If I do sudo or gparted, you find out it's not installed. So we're going to do some interesting stuff. We're going to do uh, sudo apt update. Then we shall do uh, sudo apt install. Parted. So we're just going to install a tool that's going to look at the partitions of the disks, and these disks are in fact USB keys. So if I now do sudo g parted, this is a uh, completely unscripted. So let's just check. hopefully we're going to do something good here. So you see the drive A. The first disk that's in the in the system is a two hundred and it's two hundred fifty six gig USB drive, and it's formatted like this. It's got a FAT thirty two partition and then an EXT four Linux partition. Whereas the second drive, which uh, annoyingly <laughs> slightly smaller, <laughs> that's not good. Uh, I was going to say the backup strategy that I use is that I buy the same drive twice. Obviously, I'm not expecting it to be slightly smaller. <laughs> because now I'm expecting it not to work. <laughs> anyway, let's see how we go. So this is the drive as I've just got it out the packet and it ought to be exactly the same size. They're both ordered for a 256 gig drive. So uh, It'll be an even better test of the, of the copying program. Now, Raspberry Pi comes with its own copying program, and that's why I'm using a graphical desktop. There are ways uh, of copying a, uh, a USB key. Uh, in the old days, what I used to do was shut down the Raspberry Pi, take the USB key out, put it into a win my Windows workstation, and copy it there, and then put it back again. But now, I've improved the process, and I just don't need to do that. I leave the key in the Pi and, and I use it, the copy program supplied with uh, the Pi software. System. So let's just go into this. That will be accessories. That will be SD card copier. This is technically not an SD card, of course. It's going to be from SDA. Again, <laughs> these ought to be identical drives, but uh, they appear not to be, which is a bit irritating. Now I'm going to say don't create new partition new UIDs, meaning that the second copied drive will be absolutely identical and could potentially cause problems if you were to put them both in the same computer at the same time and try and use them at the same time. I'm not going to do that. 
Uh, you see, it's, it's not great, it's, it's greyed out because you can't press start unless you press tab. Right now, you can press start. So I've selected the second drive properly. Let's give it a go. Right, okay. If you get this the wrong way around, you completely, completely total your system, so don't do that. This is where I look cool, that everything's going to go well and we we'll have, we'll have to worry. Come on, baby. Is this the bit where I speed it up so it looks like it happens in a flash? Oh, there we go. So now we're copying, if you remember, from the G-parted display. The first partition was a trivial boot partition. The second partition contains the information. It's copying partition 202. So, and don't forget the second partition was um, almost, it's well over 200 gigabytes in size. But it's not very full. It's a time like this where I can mention as a as a as a enterprise storage consultant in my past that there are many many ways to to copy disks on small computers like this. Um, a very crude way would be to use the dd command, and, and so Unix people of old would uh, would use that dd uh, convert and copy command. Um, that's the classic way to copy stuff still under Unix or Linux, but I think it's a bit crude. Um, and uh, I tend to use a high level tool. And what better tool to use than the standard supplied SD card copying tool. But again, it's a graphical tool and that's why I've, I've, um, I've come in via the VNC graphical uh, client server program and so we can do it graphically. I've got to keep waffling, haven't I? Because it's 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 not taking very long, and uh, I could uh, maybe I can keep waffling until it actually finishes. What do you reckon? Oh boy! Yeah. Is it at times like this where I um, tell you that this is the bang up to date? Una minus a. We are we are kernel six point six point two zero. I remember the days when we were kernel. Kernel level two um, from so much time. Um, so yeah, this is bang up to date. It's using, this is the, the Pius operating system. It, the, the latest release came in March 2024. Uh, we're now April 2024. And um, it's based on Debian version 12. So that's uh, pretty damn up to date really, isn't it? Nothing more to say. Um, this Raspberry Pi is booting from the USB key. So traditionally Raspberry Pis have got a micro SD slot and for a long time people would put cards in there and, and boot from that little micro SD card. But it's in fact quicker to uh, have the operating system running from an external USB stick. So that's what I tend to do. These USB sticks are SanDisk Pros and are capable if the hardware can drive it, of a whopping 400 megabytes per second on the USB drive, so very fast. Um, and this machine, DF Manifold Assume, and if you read the, uh, the WordPress, you'll know that it's now completely rebuilt uh, with a Raspberry Pi 5 and the latest release of the PIOS operating system. And um, there's now a massive amount of space. There's 217 gigabytes of space in the root directory. So um, there's a lot of space. We're nearly finished. So I should point out a few more things. 
copy complete. So that's <clears throat> it's not taking very long. So the entire system is copied. If I go back into sudo gparted, sudo gparted, if I can't spell, you will see that we've got the uh, SDA, the first uh, drive, which is the USB key. It's got a, a, a format like this, and the second USB key looks at 238 gigs and half 112 megs, and the second one is, yeah, four meg allocated, 512 and 232. So it's made a good copy, and it's, it's managed to um, cope with the fact that there are two slightly different sizes of drive. But it has left the UUID, the very, very low level ID on the drive, the same. So you'd have difficulty if you tried to run these both at the same time. Um, other things to note are, this is a backup of the entire system. So if the entire system crashes, uh, the key became unusable. I could just have a new Raspberry Pi, or the Raspberry Pi was somehow unusable. I could have a new Raspberry Pi, uh, or I could just take the, the backup key, plug it in, and it should be straight to go. But there are also backups of the of the computer, of the of the data stored on the computer that are happening quite frequently. And can we show that or not? If I do cron help minus help. No. Pseudo cron tab minus L. Yeah, so there is a command running um, at um, 0500 every day. And what is that command? So it's 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 com it's taking all the data which is in slash var slash www and every day it's running the tar command and it's saying tar minus create with permissions a z compressed file and the file is slash backup slash docu backup dot dollar open brackets date plus percent w and that 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 will convert to the weak number dot tar dot z and it's it's please please making a backup of the docu <coughs> with the directory. <coughs> so if we look in the ls minus l of slash backup, we have got two files already. How about that? We've got the file from last week, when the system was actually made, and the file from this week at five in the morning. Brilliant, everything's good. So there's this application level backup. I have a second backup, which every day pulls a file from this machine all the way to a master server machine and then that gets backed up and as a final bootstrap I'm making a complete copy of the whole system the operating system and the data on a clone USB key so um, that's the ultimate backup if, if for some reason the USB key completely dies I don't have to rebuild the computer I can use the backup USB key and then I can overlay it with the, the, the most up-to-date files, which will be a restore of these files here, or, or the off-site version, which will be stored on a different computer. I think now you know everything, but mostly you know how to make a full systems backup of your Raspberry Pi, and it relies on you running the operating system from a USB key, it relies on you being able to get into the system graphically using VNC, and then you just run the standard SD card copier program. Thanks for watching.